how about a little bit of some like how you got so far in hockey how you what what made you so sick? i went to the net so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's good at it <laughs> i went to the net man you know what like the hardest place to go is the place where you're gonna get the most cookies right like uh the second that you get in front of the net and you know, I, I feel like that's a tough thing now to talk to kids because everyone watches, you know, the, the skill drills and the, you know, the guys like Bedard last night. I mean, PC wrote me from downstairs and I came running up. Like you see these guys doing these extraordinary things out there, you know, that's not in everyone's skill set. Right. But uh, I mean, getting to the front of the net and just, you know, bearing down, I was lucky enough to have McKinnon and Joy out there for, uh, for, for my last year that, you know, were ripping pucks. So obviously I wasn't the one going out there to man the half wall. Uh, my job was to go and uh, man up and go to the dirty areas and, you know, do some wraparounds and bang in some rebounds. Yeah. Yeah. No, agreed. Um, Drew and still, he's still with Colorado this year, right? Yeah. They, yeah. Not, yeah. They, uh, I think Nate brought him in and, uh you know they i i'm really really happy to just see him doing well again and obviously uh you know it's a little bit of a rocky road when you're in montreal and you're a francophone player too there's a lot of like additional pressure and a lot of people from the outside making noise but uh you know to see him doing well where he is right now and then obviously nate is in co competition to be brought up probably one of the best players in the world if not the best so um you know seeing them every day on uh, tv and doing whatever uh you know it's it's this i get I, I get a little bit of pride being able to say oh those, those were my line mates you know like jonathan drew the shift wouldn't exist if i didn't put the puck in the net right <laughs> that's right that's right mckinnon's goal i think the other day a few days ago he there's like a breakout up to the far blue and then they chipped at the mckinnon coming down he snapped it for like the winner yeah back against Calgary. it was incredible i don't get to watch too much hockey but Sometimes I'll sit down and watch the highlights on TV just to relax. But I saw that one. I was like, hold, oh, but he is yeah. incredibly fast. It's crazy. Are they looking for a right winger on that line there, Ford? Yeah, you going up <laughs> or what? <laughs> Bring the big men back, eh, Ford? <laughs> they have McDermott up there now, man. They don't need me. <laughs> PC, how about yourself? Um, maybe a little bit of sharing. Obviously, your success was to get to where you were as a young player sharing, but also in the training aspect, like, were you doing any, what, what were you doing for additional work? Obviously not, were you doing It's What were you doing? Uh, well, I, just another advice to add up to what Steph is saying is like, like we tell the kids, like, how, whatever, how good you're doing right now, don't ever feel like you establish yourself already, because that's where you're going to fall asleep. And and honestly, it only takes what five, ten minutes for in a game that we fall asleep as a team That's and it. it's over. It just turn the tide right there. So as a career, if you start to feel established, well, that means you're still in need of something in your attitude that needs to be tweaked, that you need to have the, the killer instinct a little sharp, like sharper, because you you can never feel too comfortable. And, and that's what we try to teach those kids is every day we're going to try to put you guys in a situation where you're going to be uncomfortable on the ice during practice, where we see in video where like we have, we lack a little bit. We're going to work all week about the lacking that we see in the previous game. And, and I think the kids are responding pretty good right now at like knowing, okay, that's why we're repeating this drill constantly every day. And then, turns around the next weekend you see those kids doing the the low to high pass in the ozone and then boom the high forward goes between the d and now we're three high or like little thing like that that we just try to tweak in our system and 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 i think right now the guys are really like jamming they're, they're, they're all together they're they're really like blending well and i think it comes from their hard work that we bring them to the gym every day now that they're in christmas vacation already because of college um so now we do a boot camp we're in third days third day of boot camp and we work out we go on the ice and we do it every day and the workouts are hard like me and steph are sore right now and we're really sore man we're really sore <laughs> needed a double double coffee before this podcast and that's it like it's just to put always the work because it's gonna pay off like while there's probably like 10 teams in our league that they're probably taking three or four weeks off right now during Christmas 
But for us, it's like, guys, we rented 25 hours of ice and they're all going to be optional. If you show up, that means you're here to work. So yep. we're not going to force anybody to come, but that's, but that's our mentality. You just get that long of a break, eh? Like a few yeah. like getting teams get a few weeks. Wow. that's we get, four, we get four weeks, everyone in the league, in our league. That's the college. Uh, yeah. I, I don't agree necessarily with it. I don't think it's – but that's why. Right now we just – today we had a tournament. We played four on four. Uh, like we're just trying to keep the guys on their toes and yep. and keep them working every day. There, there's certainly a balance, and I feel like even going through from how I went up at school, we only had five days – at college, we had five days off. Yeah. I feel like in the BCHL junior days – I think it was seven a week off yeah week off. seven days eight days that was it at most yeah. and even as yeah i don't know if the followers know this but if you take three or four days off from playing hockey you're out you're we're out of shape it takes like a, a practice or skate to get back in shape so i mean i think you know there's i mean maybe they are trying to do something different with the four weeks off that's a long time but yeah, yeah. even a couple of weeks maybe balancing it out would be but it's a lot of work to, for them too, right scholastically like they're 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 mixing the both it's like student athletes i mean you would know better especially considering you went to quinnipiac and, and you were a part of you know like a school like a student athlete culture yeah. you know whereas pc and i were junior guys you know uh after four days i was like come on man bring me back i need to go start playing again right yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's certainly two different routes, but also just uh, it's different being a student athlete. Um, yeah. I mean, it all comes with pressure, of course, but just balancing with school is a little different, especially yeah. uh, school didn't come, um, I'll say easy to me, I guess a little harder work, but also finding time to do it and dedicating it just to, you know, even just making sure you're at class and, and staying with the course, we'll say. Um, can be can be difficult to any student athlete um stefan do you want to go into a little bit about skill development and development as players yeah Just... i mean look me me and pc it's it's it, it's super nice that we get to sit there every day and kind of discuss like hey you know what we're gonna attack this we're gonna attack that i mean as far as philosophy goes i mean it, it, if you put your mo if you Put the most effort that you can to the drills. You get a, you'll you'll move along with anything, right? And um, you know, we usually start our days like power skating. Like every Monday, we have a uh, a day that we it's our optional skate day, but that's the day where we're doing most of our uh, our skill drills and and power skating and everything like that. I mean, look, the game's gotten so fast now that you know skating is undeniably the biggest asset that you can have on the ice, and then. Uh, you know, me and me and PC and I every day we sit there and we try to tweak things. And you know, PC is one of those guys who's always like, "Let's go for more," you know. And then we're st then we're going at drills and we're like, "Hey, okay, like what could we do to improve this? And what could we do to improve that? And how should we improve this?" And you know, obviously the the business we started was a, the, the hockey two machine. Like obviously PC is a machine, and then <laughs> I was a machine too uh, before. <laughs> yeah, you're getting back for. Yeah, you get back. Me, me and Foreign, like Foreign and I, we we've been doing like the um, Wim Hof therapy, like the the sauna followed by the the ice bath. Oh wow! Yeah, and I'm telling you, like Foreign went from, I don't know, not not one pack to like actually four pack in like three months. So, I mean, it's it's again, it's dedication. It's what when you put your mind to it, right? And and like. One thing we love is seeing a guy that was undrafted by the queue. Um, he's on our team. He comes. Uh, he comes from uh, Saint Jean sur Richelieu. Uh, it's more like around Montreal area, and he never really played like uh, structure hockey. And we brought him along, and he is so he's a horse, right? Like he's got skills. He he can skate like he skates really well. More like he skates better than than uh, Foreign and I. I think, and um, he's like he's, he's got all the the tools, all right. And right now, that's what we're trying to give him, like the tool, the the tool case, the the toolbox. We're trying to make sure that whenever he gets that call for the next level, he's ready to bring all the tools with him because he has a nice box that we build up together. And and right now, he got his first call up last year with the rampart, or last week with the rampart, 
And they were coming to see actually other guys on our team, like one that they drafted and another guy that was like leading uh, the league in points. They were coming to see him and they end up grabbing uh, one of our other guy that's undrafted. And, and he's the one with the shot right now because he was able to adjust and, and, and fit in the structure that we, we apply. And, and, and it's crazy how... You probably know it too, Brandon, like how it feels for a coach to see that a guy that came from nowhere and actually being the guy with the shot, like he's he's getting the opportunity. Now he's on a road trip with them yep. and he's supposed to play tonight, I think. We'll see. But yep. <laughs> it's just like for us, it's like, all right, let's let's try to develop another one. We need another guy to go up. Like That's right. We see a guy. We see a guy that like last year was not even under any radar on defense. And now he's one of our top defense and NCAAs are asking about him. And, and now we're like, okay, now we're, we're actually doing something with a purpose. We have a purpose in, in our new like career. And that's what like kind of motivates us every, every day to just get up and, and make things happen. So, these two, these two types of players and, and people, they must be very like their work ethic must be amazing. They must be great coachful listeners and humble as well, right? Not talking. They're probably just, Kate, okay, I'm here at the rink. Tell me, oh, yeah. let's do this. Let's work. Let's put time in, right? They're not coming. Oh, I've been here for a long time. And yeah, I can do, you know, talk, t- talk uh, a little too much. Maybe they're, they're probably humble. Is that? You're right. Like being coachable is probably one of the best skills you can have in your toolbox. Like be coachable right there is like, Okay, if I have the choice between the guy that's coachable and the guy that's not, to me, it's an easy choice, right? It's like, okay, this guy, we can change him. He's going to improve. And the other guy is like, okay, this is the other way around. And even though we try, you, we're going to try. But now there's like a, a little bit of like questioning, question mark, like, and, and you don't, don't want to have that. Like when you look at your players, right? You want them to have the right attitude. To, so we have to show them the culture that, we've been kind of teach during our pro career and how you can see the guys that didn't have that career that they, they wish they had, why they didn't like, it was, was that just because of those kind of uh, missing part for them? And, and that's what we're trying to teach them. And to be honest, like I'm going to be, I'm going to try to find that stream tonight and, and watch our, our board playing in the queue for his second game. So it's, that's what, bring us like happy every day and just well that's also what brought us that's also what brought us to decide to to, you know branch out and kind of make our own skills and development program too right so you know we saw the success that we were having with a couple of the guys here and obviously you know with both of us now just turning out of playing to you know different horizons and, and different challenges that lie ahead you know we were sitting there one day and we were like you know what even though we were both like kind of gritty players we were like i think that you know we'd have a lot to offer and what's really funny is like i've obviously been recovering but pc's in a lot of the videos and you know like some of the kids look at him and they're like oh my god like I, I, like you, you look at your skill you know but and and it, the tough thing is is like you know he has to he has to explain or i have to explain like you know what just because like he looked like this when he was playing in the nhl or the american league like like you know the guy can toe pull around the the cones like the best of them you know like uh and and so you know i think for our not our egos but you know for for the importance that we're bringing back to the game it's to show all these kids like hey you know what like we had all these tools too but you know we took different avenues to try to get to, to to the highest level possible right and I think that's a lot of kudos on PC and, you know, and I'm not going to toot my own horn, but, you know, you know, doing, figuring out ways to, you know, continue playing. And obviously, you know, we have guys now that the one guy who's going up to the queue and then we have other players on our team now that, you know, their eyes are now starting to open and they're like, Oh wow, like he's doing it. Like I can do it too. Yeah. Yeah. Belief. 